I hope you all... I messed that up. I hope you all have had your beauty sleep because we have another episode coming your way. It's time... I don't know what the heck is wrong with you. Welcome to the magic of animation where we explore the enchanting world of Disney. From the classics we grew up with to the latest releases. We'll take a deep dive into the artistry, storytelling, the unforgettable characters, and the pure magic that makes these movies timeless. So whether you're a lifelong Disney fan or new to the magic, sit back, relax, and join us as we embark on our journey through the wonderful, magical world of animation. Hello everybody, this is Joey. I am cutting in real quick because it has been a bizarre, bizarre, oh man, it's been three weeks since we recorded this episode. So, just real quick, in this episode we discuss the upcoming plans of not recording because Kevin and I were going to be in Disney World, but that was three weeks ago. So we have since come back from Disney World, I have since gotten sick from Disney World, and now we are recording the next episode today the day this released so there will be no skipping of episodes after this one comes out the skipping of episodes already happened so if we talk about that in this episode just ignore it so anyways let's get back into the introductions and hope you like the show we are discussing sleeping beauty i'm joined by fauna aka dequan fauna that's a different one (laughs) what (laughs) Okay. Uh, what? I asked you what you said, and then you didn't answer me. I didn't say anything. I just said Fauna. That's a different one. Yeah, it's a character from the movie. I know. I'm just saying it's a different <laughs> one. You know, we don't usually get characters. We usually get like, you know, outside enforcers. You know. Yeah. Well, I. I, I don't know. I that's compl- when we were all pit bulls. <laughs> exactly. I've completely, I completely forgot to do everything today until it was time to start recording. So. Uh, I had to do something quick. Well, well, so, schedule. I'm also joined by Flora, a.k.a. Kevin. Hey there. And Meriwether, a.k.a. Mike. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I didn't have a character for me. I'm just Joey. Boo. I ran out of fairies. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to start with a fun fact. You know, there was originally seven fa- fairies. That's excessive. Yep. Where? Oh, Sorry. where? That's a good fun it's fact. It's like the seven princesses of heart. How is everybody doing today? I am doing relatively well. I finished some testing that I had to do at work, and that testing leads to me acquiring, well, not acquiring, but the curing a raise that I'm getting. So Hello. that's a good thing. Hey, girl. Let's get it. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Mike is tired today. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of on, you know, it's kind of on brand <laughs> <laughs> for this episode, anyways. So, time for Pooh's hundred acre check-in. How has everybody's last four days been? Um, honestly, my last four days was just work testing mm. and laughing with coworkers. So that's nice. about it, really. Kevin? Mine's been fabulous. Yeah? Yep. Getting ready for this Florida trip. Booking all kinds of different things. Going to uh, the first night of Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. So that'll be fun. That is super exciting. Super exciting. I can't wait to go to that one day. How about your four days, Mike? Pretty chill. I had my nephew come over, so that was fun. I got to see my little buddy. That's cool. We didn't really do much because of the festival going on right by our house, so our neighborhood was lined with cars, and then our neighborhood was the detour because the road was closed, so it was nearly impossible to leave the house. So You should have left and joined the festival, man. Eh, I didn't have any cash. Feel that. So, with that, we'll go to stats from Baymax, and 
where's it at? Sleeping Beauty was released on January 29th of 1959. That was a four-year break from the last movie. It was based on Sleeping Beauty by Charles Puralt and Little Briar Rose by Brothers Grimm. I did not know that this was a Brothers Grimm story. Makes sense when I'm thinking about the part where that name comes in. Right. Um... It had an initial budget of $6 million, but it only made $5.3 million. But over its lifetime, it's made $51.6 million. It has an 89 on Rotten Tomatoes and an 80 on Audience Score. Now, because I didn't do any research, I quickly asked um, ChatGTP to give me any notable things, and it gave me way too much, so I'm not reading any of it. (laughs) <laughs> so with that we're gonna go right into timon and pumbaa's movie review speaking of that I, we watched um lion king one and a half this weekend it was great super underrated movie oh yeah we're nice. still watching uh the lion king with uh director's commentary but better. But instead of director's commentary, you get Timon and Puma commentary. Yeah. I'll just gonna say Animal Planet, but yeah, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first off, we're gonna do overall enjoyment. So instantly, I realized that I have never seen this movie. I thought I had, but nothing in this movie was familiar. The first time. <laughs> yeah. But and this movie is funny. The characters are great. The music is not great, but I really, really enjoyed it. Hmm. I'm. I'm in this kind of the same boat. I genuinely liked it, and watching this, uh, it felt like they took what they tried, like. They took the idea of Snow White and said, what if we made it, but better? Right? So I felt That's watching, I was good, like, uh... it has a similar premise and a similar kind of theme and idea as Snow White, but it actually, in my opinion, came out much better. That's a very good observation. Dequan and Kevin, got anything to say about your overall enjoyment? I enjoyed this a lot more than I remember enjoying it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like looking back on like thoughts and memories of it, I just thought it was kind of meh. It's like a, you know, boring story, nah, whatever, you know, Sleeping Beauty. Um, but it was it was very well done. Mm-hmm. The art was amazing. The you know the music was it, it went perfectly with the film. And it, it was it was a lot better than than I had remembered. Yeah. So you said that you were remembering it as meh, and yeah, me not remembering anything because I never saw it. The first, and I've been super optimistic every time there's a new movie that I haven't seen. But in the first couple scenes, when the like the initial party's happening, the animation seemed really bad. I even had a note saying that they took a major step back in the animation but then after that it like they changed the style or something and it was a lot better so i was mm-hmm. super nervous i was like oh this is going to be bad but then out of nowhere it just got really good you know what i think it could be uh because i noticed in one of the scenes they look disconnected from the world mm. and i specifically noticed that when you know they're in the castle and the three fairies are each bestowing their gift. Hmm. When you compare the fairy to the background of the castle walls, like the brick wall, it literally looks like that brick wall is like a complete, again, the th- same thing with the baby from Lady and the Tramp, hmm. something that's like a completely different animation. Almost yeah. looks like it's realistic compared to them being cartoony. Yeah. And I could almost see the shadow, you know, like the drop shadow, uh, not like them having an actual shadow, but like, you know, like if someone held like a flashlight to an object against the wall, like you'd see like, yeah, that's not like in the same area. It's something disconnected like that. Like it looks like someone just planted an object on there. 
hmm. kind of reminded me of like uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where you oh, have like right. cartoon characters in almost a realistic setting. Yeah, a lot of it looked like that. Yeah, I was I was so pleasantly surprised. I was I was talking to my wife while watching it, and I was like, I I think this movie is leapfrogging so many other movies, and Aurora is jumping from the last place position in my favorite Disney princesses to very high up. <laughs> it's Kong, the one line, was, isn't it? What one line? The, the what? When will I see you again? Never. <laughs> that that. That line is amazing. <laughs> oh, never. Uh, that was funny. Is Dequan still here? I am indeed still here. Ah, haven't heard from you. I didn't have much to say, to be honest. Oh, you don't like <laughs> it? I am going to be the outlier here. Wow. I, um, overall, Jimin is not there at all. That's a bummer. <laughs> well, I guess we can move on to storyline and plot here. Um, the first note well, I want to what? I was going to ask him what what was it that you didn't like connect with with it? What, do you have anything specific that it just didn't yeah. connect with you in a way? That's Other good than, podcast to be honest, skills there. I got, I got honestly none of it. The only thing I really enjoyed about this movie was like the two kings interacting that, that's, that's <laughs> the only thing I really enjoyed hmm. okay, okay. And the guy I, I just the wanted to see if you had a little bit more in depth why you didn't connect with it or why you didn't like it or enjoy it that's all to be honest I come from the other movies coming to this one it just felt like everything was best I can say like watered down like it didn't feel like I I didn't get the sense of enjoyment that I got from the previous movies that we watched. It felt like like although they went forward in time, it felt like we went back in time. Hmm. Well, technically, they, they went to medieval times. And they went back I'm to not talking about like <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about like that's one like the whole presentation of the story, like. Like, for example, with Cinderella, like, that didn't feel like we went back in time. Cinderella felt like a progression of Disney princess movies. Why Sleeping Beauty felt like, a, you know, I don't know the word I'm looking for there, but, like, it felt like it regressed more towards, like, Snow White for me. That, you know, yeah, because that, that goes into what I was saying, because what I said, I don't know if you were here to hear it, was that Sleeping Beauty felt like they took what Snow White was like the premise and said we'll make that premise better so it's yeah. so i, I kind of get what he's coming from where he's like saying like it doesn't look like it leapt forward in the sense of a story because it felt like it went back to an original story and it's like idea premise and it's layout the way it's structured and said we'll just do it better so i can kind of get that because cinderella it's another Disney princess, but it doesn't feel like Snow White's type of Disney princess. Mm. Well, this one felt very much like it had the same structured layout, like the formula for it. So mm. I, I can get that with what he's saying. Yeah, and the whole time while making this, Walt was worried about the constant comparison between, you know, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, and Cinderella. So uh, he put a lot of work into coming up with, you know, restyling it you know the, the the specific more of like an angular sleeping beauty look which was it, 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 that's what took a lot of time it, like i guess it was a very painstaking and time consuming process that's why the budget was so high for the film i'll be honest what kind of missed the mark with me then i, I respect his attempt though Okay. Walt really, uh, I'll talk about it in Legacy, actually. But for storyline and plot, the first note I want to make is they could have avoided everything by just inviting Maleficent to the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I low-key disagree yeah. with that. I think Maleficent just a hater, though. Right. Like, she probably just honestly, used that as the excuse. She was going to do it anyways. I, <laughs> I, that's one thing I will say I do like my, about Maleficent. She's just evil to be evil, really. Like, 
you really didn't have to go that far, but you did. Like, she went the extra mile. And I was sitting there this whole time, like, you are just evil just because. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Because nowadays, villains always need a reason. No, because they left me in the water drowning for four years. So I decided I want revenge on everyone and dehydrate everyone. Yeah, no, she's villains. just like, no, just because. Yeah, villains these days have to be complicated. Well, at right? the same time, what was the purpose? Or like, I'm okay with being evil for the sake of being evil, right? You know, that's good, because you don't get a lot of that. But at the same time, funny. what was your goal? What's your purpose? Her what purpose are you trying to achieve? <laughs> she just kind of invited herself. There's no way of keeping her out. And oh, then she's I just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give your child a gift. Yeah, she'll have all those things. But also, I'm gonna just curse her to essentially die at this age, and then leave. But what was the goal? Why did you want to do that? Did you want revenge on the kingdom? Why nah, didn't she you ever do fun. anything with this? Nothing ever gets accomplished or done. She did take the I, I, I like I said, she did take the extra mile because like she went all the way. She wasn't stopping at her goal. Like I, I gotta admire her. I'm trying to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's like a lot. There's like a lack of backstory or understanding really of it, other than just like like we said, you know, about being upset of of like their view of her. Uh, they're basically like, no, you're just you're mean, but like we don't they don't really say why why they already don't like her. Yeah, she's just supposed to be the bad guy, just to be the bad guy. Well, yeah. she does also say she works for the forces of evil. She's like, I'm doing these, like I do what I do for the forces of evil, but hmm. what? What are you trying to achieve here? She because is the force is take, of evil. Like, if your goal is to destroy the kingdom, why don't she ever destroy the kingdom? If it's to just well, if you curse kill everyone, you don't have uh, people to terrorize. Is that what she wants? She wanted to destroy the kingdom. She wanted to do it from the inside. She knew emotional damage was better, bro. She knew. <laughs> I just don't see any purpose to her in her what she does, what she did. <laughs> it just came up said, your daughter is going to die at 16. I'm out. And I'm going to do nothing for all these years. Yes. Hear me out. You got you to gotta think within the malicious, malicious brain, right? So if she plagues your firstborn child that everyone in the kingdom is happy about, and says she's gonna die at 16. That throws the entire kingdom into frenzy. Now they don't know what to do. So they think to themselves, we just gotta prevent this any way possible. And they take all the precautions, but at the end of the day, she's winning. She's at her castle laughing. Her plan went down without a hunch, you know? You could also just terrorize the people in general, be a constant threat. That requires a lot of work from her though. She doesn't wanna do a lot of work. She's, royal. Oh, she's lazy she's and petty. Team. That's at best. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it. There's nothing else to this character. That has no purpose. <laughs> she has no grand ploy. She has no play. She's not trying to achieve anything. She's just lazy and petty. That's what makes this so perfect. No. <laughs> it's upsetting because I, I want to like her because I love her design. But her goal, I'm like, wait, why did she do any of this? Makes no sense to me. <laughs> well, so speaking of her curse, the good fairy's pettiness ruined their entire 16 year plan. I with know. Literal seconds <laughs> left on the clock. <laughs> that was funny. I'm not going to lie. I was like, that is, that is one way of doing I'm not going to lie. That was, that was such a, like, what's that word? A safe, a safe keep, not a safe keep. Is it a safe keep the I'm looking for? What do you, I don't know, safe house? I don't know what you're trying to find a word for. Not safe house, it's like, when you have a backup plan, it's like a safety backup plan, it's a phrase for it. I just can't think of the name of it. Backup backup plan? No, plan it's not backup B? backup plan. Not plan B. Safety net? Not Google this safety now. Safety net, that's not, it. Well, that's not the one I was looking for, but that is definitely another one. He's going to look up some arbitrary word and say, that's what it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. Go ahead, go ahead and continue talking as I look for this. Um, 
my next note is pretty far into the movie because I have M Maleficent's trance on Aurora was very eerie. I don't know why it unsettled me so much. What well, I guess before we jump into that, there was one thing I wanted to say that I thought was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. It was only funny for me. And it's like in the when they first announced the king, his king uh, Hubert. When I first watched it, I heard them say King Human. I was like, wait, no, that's not it. I had to rewind the movie a second time to hear it again. And they said human. I'm like, no, that isn't right. And I'm like, is there is there subtitles to this movie? Because I needed to figure out what they said. Found that there were subtitles. And I watched the rest of the movie in subtitles because I needed to know. It, did they call this man King Human? Because I thought he was just and King Human. Human baby. Yeah, and then I found it was King, King Hubert. But I'm always going to remember him now as King Human. <laughs> King of the Humans. King of the Humans. That's good. Um, Flora's plan to put everyone asleep was not the greatest plan. It seemed very problematic to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots well, can I go thought wrong. that was a pretty selfish plan. <laughs> a lot of things could go wrong while... The entire kingdom is sleeping. <laughs> well, at least they put out all the candles. Yeah. <laughs> my, my daughter and I had a talk about that one. She's like, why are they putting the candles to sleep? I was like, because you're not supposed to sleep with the candle lit. That's good. So that was that was a good learning moment. Clever, clever. Also, speaking to that, why did the three fairies, when chasing down Aurora through the... Uh, the fireplace that was a door that got sealed why were they trying to push it open <laughs> and then like hold up back up and they just then used magic i'm like how did you because well, at first i was thinking uh, oh they're I... trying to see because they don't know where she would have gone but then they made a door and was like oh we knew exactly where she went now uh which was established throughout the movie is that them three are not the brightest <laughs> I don't think they're not that smart. They just bicker amongst each other, which stops them from getting to a better goal. <laughs> also, if they were all on the same page, they'd be a force to be reckoned with. Because they're kind of strong. I'm not going to lie. Also, Flora's flower plant could have worked, actually. Or what? The You remember the original plan was, we'll turn Aurora into a flower up mm. until her 16th birthday? That actually could have worked if you did it on her 16th birthday. Turned her into a flower on her 16th birthday? Yeah, I guess that would have made sense. Or another thing that bothered me throughout this is how come no one is being honest with this child? What do you mean? Well, it's dangerous like, if she knew who she actually was. The less No, but to knew... inform her, you know, like, hey, on your 16th birthday, we're going to do this thing so you don't have this bad thing happen to you because when you were a child you were cursed and to keep her informed about her being royalty instead of just last minute dropping that on her at the end there well the more like, the more people who knew who she was the more dangerous it was for her no one else has to know only she has to know well yeah but then it only takes her to tell one person and then that person to tell one person and she yeah. never met anybody well she did on her 16th birthday yeah, she met one. <laughs> oh, yeah, she met and one then, person and she was and that way. Like, if she's I'm informed afraid. about this big thing that that can happen, that would have actually made her a little bit more vigilant. Probably be like, okay, I really need to be careful. Also, the fact <laughs> that I'm just constantly letting her go out into the forest, I'm like, that y'all are letting a lot of things happen when you know how dangerous of a situation she is in. On her 16th birthday, nonetheless, when this is supposed to happen, you're like, yeah, just go out into the woods by yourself alone. <laughs> that is a bit problematic there. I don't think she would have been that vigilant, though, because they also told her not to see anybody or talk to anybody. She had a whole conversation and danced. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, I really, really enjoyed the fact that they fell in love with each other. Well, I mean, that's still problematic. That's just Disney logic for you. Disney magic, falling in love the first time you meet someone. But It was in a dream, man. That was the first time they met. But the, no, uh, dang the, it. It was in a dream. They met in a dream. The way that both of them wanted to abandon their, their arranged marriage at birth to be with each other, even though they were arranged to marry each other, but they didn't know that. 
I like that a lot. I like think actually, about it though, fate. Wait, yeah, that was that was fate and destiny. But when you think about it, I feel like they did the right thing. Like, be married to somebody you don't know, or be married to somebody you just met. I'm gonna check the house with the person I just met. <laughs> also, I have so much respect. Like, while well, Prince Philip won my respect in the one time that he talks to his dad. Like, when he comes back and he's like, I found the girl I'm going to marry. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's some peasant girl. I don't know. I just love her. And yeah. the dad, you know, not obviously upset because it's not. <laughs> yeah, he called her a peasant girl. <laughs> or it was either him or the king that called her some peasant girl. Because I think he said some random girl in the woods and the king called her a peasant. Yeah, the king definitely called I mean, her a peasant. Yeah, he so said cottage. He said cottage girl. Yeah, okay. And then the king called her a peasant. And he was like, I don't care. I love her. I'm going to do it anyways. And he just does it. I'm like. You know what? I respect you for that so much. Mm -hmm. Being like, look, man, I understand you got this arranged wedding, but I'm going with my heart. And I fall in love with a girl who isn't of royalty, who you, who he, obviously the king viewed as higher being of royalty as well, because he didn't like the fact of him be falling for a peasant girl. And he was like, I don't care about that. I just know I love her. Hmm. Well, well, here's another thing, another little tidbit i think kind of flew under the radar is the king was going with it yeah he he went to the throne to tell the other king yep. like hey man mm -hmm. it's not happening to be you know he, he's gonna go marry <laughs> this chick well to because be i mean his son kind of did just tell him i'm doing it and then yeah. hopped on a horse and ran away he was kind of like i was gonna say to be a devil's advocate to. he really didn't have a choice there his son said he was doing it and then left <laughs> so he yeah, wasn't well, going to be there he said, wasn't i'm doing going it to be i'm a horse and gone to marry and he was Laura. like I well, I absolutely need a uh, a dub of Kevin going, "Hey man, it's not happening." Right over the king's voice during that scene. I, I need that in my life. <laughs> well, if I remember, I will. I will do. I'll make that happen on TikTok. <laughs> um, I loved that Meriwether was finally able to let out her frustration and temper on the crow. Like she, yeah. so, it finally so boiled up to like, the surface. She turned the crow into a statue. Isn't that like illegal in fairy, fairynism? Where, like using your magic to stonify animals? I think wow. there. I thought they were all. I mean, <clears throat> Maleficent's a fairy too. Yeah, you know, but I wanted to know: is that evil, canon you know? to this movie? They never addressed her as a fairy. They dressed her as her highness and I think a witch. Yeah, she's just the evil fairy. So, yeah, she's like a she's like a mixed breed, you know. She's a she's a witch. She's a queen. She's also a fairy and the forces of evil. She kind of got it like all. Because I thought like the, the fairy thing was introduced just order. in the movie Maleficent. Right. She's the Avatar. <laughs> yeah. um... Was she true? Because I only thought that was introduced in the Maleficent movie that she was a fairy. That was the first I ever heard that she was. She is represented as the evil fairy and the self-proclaimed mistress of all evil. Self-proclaimed? That's how you know that you're just that person. <laughs> She's him? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be the self-proclaimed master of snacks. Um, the fight scene between her and Philip was awesome, and the way that she put oh. the thorn bushes around the whole kingdom was a brilliant plan. But unfortunately for her, his sword was able to just slice through it. But it's funny you said that too, Joey, because the first thing that went through my head, she was like, "Ha, thorns!" I'm like, "Dude, he has a sword. What are you? What are you doing?" <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> that poor, poor horse, though. Yeah, the oh, horse yeah, yeah. is the horse jumping is in. Though. He do. <laughs> A horse is truthfully the goat. He he went through everything. No, he's a horse. He's not a goat. <laughs> you know, you're right. He truly is the stallion. You know. <laughs> you, know you know who the horse reminded me of? It it's much later okay. on. No. Maximus. Okay. No, it's a much later on Disney movie, uh, known as Tangled. It yeah, reminded Maximus. me of the horse they pick up later in the movie. Maximus. Maximus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, he gave me, like, very strong Maximus vibes. Yeah, they're very similar. It's Maximus' dad. It's Maximus' dad. It's really similar storylines. 
So I have a question for you three, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know how the fairy council is a thing? No. Still in my cannon. My head cannon. <laughs> so, there's four fairies in this movie. Uh -huh. All displaying much, much, much greater power than the previous fairies. Do you think the fairy council, not like Maleficent, do you think they let her come to the meetings? Um, no, because she, she locked herself in her tower for years, and that's why most of the kingdom thought she was dead. Good point, good point. I also wouldn't say that the good fairies are any more powerful than the fairy godmother or the blue fairy. I mean, the blue fairy literally created life. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I guess I've just seen uh, these fairies in this movie display more, you know, magics. Yeah. They're part of the whole movie where the other ones are just in one scene. Okay, so I looked it up a bit. She is a... She is purely a malevolent fairy or evil fairy. Uh, is an incarnation of pure evil. Nice. And apparently has been causing Stefan's king, King Stefan's kingdom... Uh, misfortune <laughs> for so many uh, for such a long time and she the reason she did curse the daughter was just because she was offended she wasn't invited <laughs> boom oh, that's, that's not nearly as cool now it is she was just cool. offended she wasn't invited and so took it upon herself to curse th their daughter you know, this is a reoccurring thing, and like movies, books, and video games. The people gotta stop not inviting these other people to these parties. <laughs> and another source of media, they didn't invite this queen to the ball, so she turned an entire kingdom into dolls. Yikes. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, Kevin? I mean, I, you, what do you think she trouble. would do if she got invited? You'd be like, ah! Oh! I got invited. I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah, what if she starts setting people one. on fire? <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like if Maleficent got invited to, you know, the ceremony, I feel like if anything, she'd have poor party manners. She'd probably just be dipping her hands in all types of foods and drinks. She'd just that. be doing everything evil. <laughs> well, here's She's my thing. She's super evil. She's like Chernabog. <laughs> here's my she, thing. Yeah, according to this, she is because she's just an incarnate... Uh, why can I never remember how to say this word unless I see it? Uh, incarnation of pure evil. Yeah, so she's, she's literally just like, I was just born evil. Yeah. So my thing so is So she might that... not have purposely cursed the daughter, but would have still more than likely caused an issue. If she would have been invited, I mean, I feel like she had the ability to be there anyways because she can be anywhere. So might as well invite her just by the off chance that it she might be in a good mood because of it. Right? Might bring some you no know, might bring some henchmen with her. They're definitely gonna be a problem, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but we can live with that versus, you know, my daughter not being able to live past sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But back to the fight, I was so glad that the the fairies ended up having to help Philip because I would have been so upset if he was able to beat a dragon, a magical dragon on his own. Dragon. <laughs> so what was funny about it is when they first set him free and give him the you know the sword and shield, they straight up tell him, "You're gonna you're gonna need these because you're gonna be fighting on your own. We can't help." And in the first second, they helped him. <laughs> they're like, "Oh no, they're dropping rocks. I'll turn them into bubbles for you." I was like. Man, for not for saying how you can't help them, you're helping a lot. Wait, see, that, that's that's mistranslation. They, the they were helping with the henchmen, not directly with. Mark. Yeah, see, so they just said Kevin he was going to face it. some trials in the <laughs> in the future that he's going to need that for. They said they see, can't help him, and then they the helped him. Is, the thing is, that they were mistranslating. They said they won't do the. They, what they meant is, we won't fight with you. But we'll definitely help you get there and cover you just in case you know something <laughs> happened. They still helped him fight at the end. They gave that they gave his sword an aimbot. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, that wasn't an aimbot, okay? All they did was piss some pure light into that blade. Why they did he use the it? sword? <laughs> because he didn't want to get close to a dragon, bro. I don't <laughs> want to get close to a dragon. They said, made the sword strike true and vanquish evil or something, and he threw it, and that, that hit a straight-up heart shot. <laughs> I 
I just got great aim. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it was desperation. They cover that thing in metallic aimbot. They gave it magnesis <laughs> to the heart. My magnesis. Uh, the last. I'm gonna thing. be honest. Oh, sorry. Let me just say this one last thing. Gonna be honest. If it was me, I wouldn't have thrown my sword. That's my last line of defense. <laughs> right. I'm gonna keep swinging. If it didn't work, <laughs> he was screwed. <laughs> right. If it missed, he's done. Oh, it's because he knew he had aimbot. Um. So the last thing I have is I did. If the movie was made today, the ending would have been a little different. Maybe not even the ending, maybe earlier on. But she just accepted the fact that her family that she's been growing up for the past 16 years with wasn't actually her family. And she just accepted her real family. No questions asked. Yeah, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah maybe that was some information that was a little bit left out. Maybe they explained <laughs> it to her on their walk to the castle. I'm going to say that just for my own <laughs> mental health. <laughs> But that's that is... again going into my thing of if they were just honest from her, from with her from the beginning because I guess in the movie they don't show that it was ever an issue, so it never does become a problem. But in a realistic point viewing it, it's like that could have been a problem. So, and they always have it backfire in shows and movies where if you don't tell them, they like you know run off or get you know upset and stuff like that. Learning the truth. So if they keep her in the loop and let her know about the things that are happening. It isn't so hard later on. <laughs> uh, with that, we can move to characters, right? Sounds good. So we've mm-hmm. spoken a lot on Maleficent, so I'll just say she was incredible. Um, mm-hmm. The fairies were amazing, especially Meriwether. <laughs> Maleficent's minions were fun. I think the green one. The green one was uh, Fauna. Fauna. Wow, how did you know to call me Fawn at the beginning of this? I don't know. I just matched their vibes with you guys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Maleficent's minions were fun. I liked how they were just little, like, goblin Animals. guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Prince Philip had a little bit of a creep moment, pulled a prince from Snow White, and he just popped up and started dancing with her (laughs) but Uh, yeah everything else about him was great his design his personality like mike was saying the fact that he threw away his princess wife to be with this random lady he met in the woods this was a good character also, I had a, a thing that when he was a kid, it was kind of funny. Like, I feel like as a kid, he did not like what they were doing. Although, like, hey, yeah, you, like, what was he, like, maybe, like, six or something? Right. So, you're going to marry this little baby. And he <laughs> looks like, I'm marrying a baby? Like, guys, come on now. This isn't right. <laughs> like, I could tell as a kid he was not happy with that. And I'm like, yeah, that is weird. That is definitely weird. And he gave her, like, this weird stink I like... <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just found that funny. Um, Aurora... And also, though, so you said about his creep moment with uh, uh, Aurora. I was having a hard time remembering your name. As similar to Prince Charming's with Snow White's, mm-hmm. I give his a lot more benefit because he didn't have to hop a right? fence into someone's property. He didn't have to. They trespass. were both in the woods, and he just kind of was like. Wow, she has a beautiful voice. Wow, she is really pretty. I'm gonna go up and dance with her. Talk, try to talk to her. Yeah, and she. The had only already... issue I had is when she's pulling away and he's like constantly grabbing her hand. I'm like, uh, that's a little bit <laughs> of a red flag, my man. But you know what? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aurora's design was so good. I loved her non-ball gown, and her ball gown dress was cool too. And so, her name, what was it, Briar Rose? That's a sweet name, too. One of her several names. Sleeping Beauty, Princess Aurora, Briar Rose. That's a lot of names. Many names. Yeah, which actually, um, because of all name. the name variations, Princess Aurora has the distinction of being the first Disney princess to have a name that's different from the title of her film. Hmm. Hmm. You know, Cinderella, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty. Snow White, you mean? Or no, sorry, yeah, thank you. Snow White, <laughs> Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, 
her name isn't Sleeping Beauty, it's Princess Aurora or yeah. Briar Rose. Briar Rose is a sweet name. But with that being said at the same time, she also has the uh <laughs> the least uh amount of screen time <laughs> out of all the princesses. Yeah. She was only in the film for a total of 18 minutes, and she only had 18 lines. That doesn't even seem right. Yep. Wow. There's something funny, because, you know, in the movie, they're fighting over a blue dress and red dress for her. Mm -hmm. I was curious, because I couldn't remember what dress color she was supposed to wear. I'm like, I thought it, thought it was red, but blue also worked. And again, they did the whole blue dress and blonde hair thing. That seems to have been a big prominent thing. But anyways, when I looked her up, just like character, I just type in Aurora and go to like Google Images. It literally shows me both images back to back. Mm. First one in red, second one in blue. And I'm like, they both work. And it's in different art styles that her dress is two different colors. Yeah, so quick story about that is, one, her dress in the Disney Princess line is pink. And... Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure this is true. This might have just been speculation that I heard, but I thought it was a fact that the animators couldn't decide what color to make her dress, and they were constantly arguing about it, so then they decided to put it in the movie as a plot point. So, fun thing about that, too, her dress, I mentioned this in the, Snow, um, the Cinderella podcast, where Cinderella had a pink dress on. I mentioned that it reminded me of Sleeping Beauty, because mm -hmm. the design of her dress and her hair all looked like it. The very first dress, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that black and cream dress that she was wearing, that thing was sweet. Mm-hmm. That, I wouldn't even really, I mean, it technically was a dress, but the more, like, casual yeah. clothes, I would, it was a lot better. That, that's my, that was my favorite look. Yeah, like Belle's casual dress, the blue with the white, versus her yellow ball gown, but, yeah. That's all I got for characters. Yep, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so visuals and animation. Um, I had already mentioned that I thought that the animation took a step back, but then it changed, so whatever. Um, after the time jump, it was good. And this movie had a completely unique style. Like, I feel like they completely changed the style of their animation for this movie. Oh yeah, and I absolutely loved it. If it you was took, great. If you took a character from this movie and put it next to Cinderella or Alice or Dumbo, they would look completely out of place because of how yep. different the style is. Or even put it to our previous movie, Lady and the Tramp. Right. There's a lot more, I think it's uh, called cell shading. I don't know if it's actually what it is, but it looks more cell shaded and it looks more like outlined. Mm. And then Mike, what you were saying that they had multiple styles clashing though like they had the disney style they had this new sleeping beauty style they had the like the realism style in the castles and then they had these like really weird just abstract shape style for like backgrounds and stuff like the trees were completely different and the rocks around maleficent's castle was different or tower or whatever you want to call it mhm mm but I thought it was going to be a bigger issue, but it, it really wasn't. They all kind of mesh very well and give you a distinct idea of where everything kind of is and making the area seem different. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of because they keep like different art styles to them. Hmm. Um... When they got there, when they started using their magic again, that whole scene was very, very funly animated. If that's something you can say. <laughs> yeah, you could say it. I, I, funny enough, I thought at first Fauna broke the rules first when she was lighting the candles on the cake she made, like the first one without magic. I was like, wait, is that her wand? <laughs> and then she just kind of like blew the fire on and threw it this. I'm like, I don't think that was her wand. But I think she was using magic just there to light the candles. She it was great too because she decorated it and put the candles on, and she was like, "Now we just have to bake it." I was, I was like, "Oh no, you're supposed to bake the layers first. 
And then the last thing I have on animation is the way that Maleficent flew to the castle at the end was very well done. So, if you guys don't have anything, we'll go to music, which I unfortunately was so entranced with the movie that I forgot to take notes of what songs were in it. So I have Once Upon a Dream and I Wonder, which were both okay. Which one was I Wonder? Uh, I believe that's a song she was singing when uh, Prince Philip found her in the woods. Oh, the first song, like when she first got out there. Okay. I think. But I know there's more songs after that, but I didn't make any note of them. I didn't really remember any other song. I think there might have been one that I thought the king and, like, uh, King Human and uh, <laughs> King Stefan were singing, but it wasn't really a song. They were just kind of doing, like, a chant at best. Yeah, so I we got two songs. Once Upon a Dream. The opening song, and then she was singing the forest. Oh yes, the song that literally just says the name Sleeping Beauty, like repeatedly. We got I Wonder, and then we got Once Upon a Dream again. And then the drinking song, which you were just talking about. Um, Is that really considered a song? Well, it's on their album, and that's it. So I guess there's only those three oh. songs. And then a bunch of scores. So that's a very short segment for me. Yep. Yeah. And now the humor segment. I found so much of this movie hilarious. <laughs> like the minions saying, we've been looking for a baby. And then Maleficent was like, did you hear that? They've been looking for a baby for 16 years. <laughs> 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 what is... Oh, they're so great. <laughs> And uh, making the cake and folding an uncracked uh, egg in. Yeah. Mm hmm. No big deal. <laughs> it's funny like, when she first puts them in and she does the fold over, and then you hear, she hears like the, the crack noise and she like stops, like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's so good. And then the other two are arguing about the dress at the same time. The horse drops Phil in the water by he jumps over the pond, but he jumps too high, so Philip hits the hits the branch or something and then drops down. It was mean. He was like no carrots. I was like, man, he was just too excited. Give him a break. You promised him oats and carrots, man. The animals pretending to be the prince with his clothes. I loved that. And then Mike, like you said, when will I see you again? Oh, never. So good. <laughs> the line delivery in that scene is, one, kind of true, because when you're panicking like that, you do kind of say stuff you don't mean to say like that, because, like, you just get random words in your head because you're so worried about trying to rush and panic. Well, you're panicking because you're trying to rush. But it's just funny, this that line delivery, oh, never, wait, wait, never. <laughs> Know, and funny. then the, the little assistant guy with the guitar or whatever kind of instrument that was stealing the wine with his guitar and then he passed out drunk man that guy was a lightweight <laughs> that he was not two... that much weight wine. <laughs> <laughs> he took two drinks and that man was buzzed I'm like man, that guy's a lightweight well, we don't know how strong that wine was right aged it for 16 years bro <laughs> A strong piece of wine, and then nah, that dude's just a white lightweight. It's okay, you can say he's a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> and then right before that, the kings were fighting about who wasn't going to want to marry the other one, and then they immediately made up all over a fish while they were fighting. <laughs> he was hitting up with a fish, and they're like, "Oh, this is funny." Do you guys have anything else about the humor? Um, I don't have much on humor. Like I, I feel like at face value, like I feel like it didn't have a lot of humor. And then, like looking back at it, I was like, "Wow, you know, what? actually, there, there was, there was enough." You know. <laughs> I feel like it's humor that doesn't need like punchlines to it. It just kind of happens. Right. It's feels, like just like feels natural. 
it's just like delivered humor. I feel like it was like very different humor than funny. than what the the previous films were because the previous films were kind of more like the slapstick humor, like the gag humor. You know, this mm-hmm. was this is a lot more subtle. Mm-hmm. Not subtle as in like it didn't stand out, but subtle as in like they didn't have to push for it. Yeah. It wasn't like trying to lead up to something or doing exaggerated stuff for the the humor. Yeah, it was just in the way that characters, you know, said things and expressed themselves. Because like Meriwether was like just with her constant like I'm ready to like tussle and <laughs> kind of attitude just made me kind of laugh. Hmm. Um. So with that, we can move on to world building. I think. And rapid fire here the forest was cool the cottage was really cool the pond she dipped her toes in was awesome the kingdom was pretty good too they showed a a decent amount of that the maze tower when she was getting uh like tranced up to that room that was cool and then maleficent's fortress was good as well yeah there's a lot of different areas speaking of the trance thing why did she have to transfer to go up to that room to make the spindle? Why didn't she just make the spindle there in the room when they left and transfer to touch it there? Why did they... Huh. Fair point. I don't know, maybe she was scared of the fairy stopping her? Yeah. They shouldn't have walked out that room. I can't believe, no, again, the that, negligence on the that, fairies. That letting her go out in the forest alone and be like, we're going to put you in this castle. The day's not over, but we, we're we we're very confident we've, you know, avoided this. So we're just going to leave you in this room alone. Six, as you're upset, too. Six years. <laughs> and they mess it up by getting petty over a dress color. And then they get lucky to where it's going to be fine anyways. And then they mess up again by leaving her alone. Just a lot Terrible. of things. Anyway, I, that just popped in my head when you said yeah. about the things. I was like, wait, why did she have to <laughs> go through all that? Did you guys have anything else for world building? Nope. So no, emotion- I just thought it was good. Yeah. So emotional impact. Um, I don't think there's very many movies that are going to have an emotional impact on me. There's there's some, but I I mean, obviously, I enjoyed it. I guess that's an emotional impact. I didn't really feel sad at any point. I didn't. Nah. I, I mean, I guess I was a little creeped out when she was in her trance. It made me feel a certain way. Oh, the wide-eyed stare. <laughs> I, so this is just me with my messed up humor, but I laugh. I, I started <laughs> laughing so hard when she, like, wide-eyed stared at the ball. Because she just goes from crying with just pure tears to just... Silence and wide-eyed staring. I was like, that is just unsettling. It's more like a nervousy laugh I had. I was like, that is just unsettling to my soul. Hmm. But it's so hard because, I mean, added, we added it in for the Alice in Wonderland because that made sense for an enjoyment aspect of it on emotional impact. Yeah. But a movie like this doesn't necessarily do the exact same thing of enjoyment as an emotional impact right so it's kind of i guess just how you take it from each movie and what it's trying to deliver yeah yeah because at the end of the day all movies are trying to entertain you they're all trying to give you enjoyment but it's depending on the scenes and what it's trying to um what it's trying to portray to you in its scenes of sadness or anger, frustration, happiness. Because happiness is the general one, not just an enjoyment. Enjoyment is just what the movie's trying to do in general. Hmm. It's the scenes that are where the emotional impact comes in. Yep, yep. yep. And on that note, I also didn't really have much of an emotional impact on things. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin or Dequan, you guys got anything to say on this topic? No. Um, nah. I was just sad. <laughs> what? I did, I did not understand anything you just said there. <laughs> I, I, I was just kind of meh. Okay. 
Uh, so the message and theme, the main theme is the idea that true love conquers all and that good will always triumph over evil. If you have aimbot. Well. <laughs> Jeez. And that very support hotline. <laughs> very support hotline. <laughs> very support well. hotline. Wonderful. Um... <laughs> So the legacy, there's obviously a huge moment of legacy here where Disneyland opened with the Sleeping Beauty castle instead of Cinderella's castle. And that is mainly because the movie released the same year that the park opened. So Walt Disney wanted to advertise his movie by putting... And Maleficent is a huge part of, and the fairies and Prince Philip are a huge part of the parades at Disneyland and Disney World. At Disneyland Paris, it's also Sleeping Beauty's Castle, which is a better version than Disneyland's. I don't know why people like Disneyland so much. It's so tiny. But in Paris, <laughs> Disneyland Paris, they made it bigger. And they put a dungeon underneath it where you can go, and then there's an animatronic of Maleficent down there. Uh, as a dragon Ooh. in the dungeon. Oh, that's terrifying. Right. That, that sounds like a nightmare. Um, I forgot to look up if Sleeping Beauty won any awards. So let's look that up right now. <laughs> um, shoot. Do you guys have any memories to talk about in the legacy? Only thing I recall, I thought she was inside of the case. Hmm? Oh, like... I thought that... that... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I thought... Yeah. Like Snow White. Snow White. Yeah, I thought that she was the one that was in the case, not Snow White. Mm-hmm. See, I'm telling you, it feels like this was <laughs> the formula they took of sleeping... Or of uh, Snow White. It's why a lot of times, I feel like that's a thing, common thing with many people. They always get these two movies mixed together. They bl- they mesh into each other because they do the same formula. Hmm. Um, so it was nominated for Academy Award for Best Music, Original Score, um, and Original Song for Once Upon a Dream. But it didn't win. Hmm. Has any of these movies won anything yet? Yeah. I feel like I keep them being nominated. I'm pretty sure Dumbo won some stuff. Dumbo was pretty great. And then obviously Sleeping Beauty. I don't know why, but uh, the the title Sleeping Beauty is always like a... Like I, I would hear the title of that movie and I'd be like, that's a legendary movie, even though I'd never seen it. <laughs> Really? What? I say really. Really what? That you would think that that's a legendary movie. Yeah, I don't know. I just always felt like it had a a certain prestige to it, like it was top tier. Mm. Like Cinderella was always top tier. Oh, okay. Well, also, um, so I think also it's a Maleficent herself has been such an iconic character and has gone through you know just the years is always being recognizable not just on like well mostly design but laugh and the way she is that they one made those two spin-off or not spin-offs but the kind of rebooting of maleficent as her own tale Mm -hmm. and that i'm going into kingdom hearts here through the (laughs) good portion of it she is the main bad guy who is in charge of the, essentially, I'm just going to call it the League of Disney Villains. <laughs> She's in charge of all of them to mess with their own worlds in a way. Well, when and so are, she's like the main antagonist for a lot of it. When you are the personification of evil, it's really <laughs> hard to top that. But it's funny because Chernobog is also in Kingdom Hearts. But he For is... a brief moment. He is a non-verbal character. No dialogue. 
I thought you were going to say non-believer. He's a non-believer. Non-believer. leading us guys, and no one listens to him because he can't say it. Because <laughs> he's non-verbal and a non-believer. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I feel like if he was the villain in a different movie that had dialogue and it wasn't sixteen stories mashed together, he would be up there. Because mm-hmm. he's it, he's well praised for how much he is in that movie. So just imagine if he had a story and dialogue. Maybe one day. But I think it just speaks volumes for how well... Even though I think, like, what was her purpose of the movie? How good of a character she, she is, though, and especially on her design. Mm. And what they made her out to be. Because out of villains like Captain Hook, Oogie Boogie... Jafar, uh, Ursula, like all of these other Disney villains that are in the game, the one who's in charge of them all is Maleficent. She's mm-hmm. the the leader of them all, basically. Well, if you look, it just if... says how much she speaks leagues above them. Yeah, because even if by look wise, if you look at every single Disney villain, if you're going to be like, so without knowing anything about these characters, which one would you think the leader is? She kind of stands out as she's got I'm in her charge stuff here. together. <laughs> and she kind of has like that like evil uh evil elegance to her <laughs> like that um regalness yeah you could say so there's some props for me bashing her in the beginning of this being like what was her purpose <laughs> yeah so that is all i have so that takes us to the end of the review segment and I have nothing for the theory segment because I didn't look anything up. I have a slight theory. Okay. Uh, in when they're talking, it probably wouldn't have changed anything. But when they're talking about Maleficent, why would she do something so mean? Like she's probably never experienced love or kindness. I it, it thought came in my head. So what if they tried to teach? Tr- they tried to be very kind with her through many things they try to be her friend they try to be nice with her would maleficent still be evil or would she start to be like you know what maybe i should start to think back they're all being very nice to me they're all being my friend it's like the if we were kind to the one person would we be able to like you know change them from being you know mean a lot of what ifs <laughs> yeah that's all it is it's just a what if it's not even like a full like you know theory like that it was just an idea i had mm. just from them mentioning like she's never experienced love in her life hmm. here's a small theory this one's uh, just just to throw a theory out there what if Melissa had a kid and her kid ended up perishing in some way so she wanted to prevent other people having kids interesting i only my only gripe with that is she didn't purposely like she didn't come there with the full intent of I want to you know like prevent like kill your child it kind of came from not being invited it was like oh yeah I know well I'm just mad at you so I see you care about that thing so I'm just gonna attack that not that thing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she viewed her <laughs> viewed her just an uh, uh, like an item that could hurt them um so with that i think we can go to riley's emotions and what was everyone's favorite and least favorite moment of the movie dequan favorite moment of the movie was the kings interacting and whatnot like that entire bike section in the castle was just very very enjoyable my Hmm. least favorite moment i think was uh the two fairies fighting over the color of the dress because I feel like that was extremely, <laughs> extremely unnecessary. Knowing that you have something much greater to stick to pay attention to. <laughs> mm-hmm. How about you, Kevin? My favorite was the the whole final scene there with you know the uh, Prince Philip fighting Maleficent. Right. Not only like the dragon scene, but the lead up to it. All that. That was my favorite. Uh, least favorite was when the fairies were putting everybody to sleep. It's <laughs> a good pick. Mike? 
Uh, I'm kind of stuck on a favorite. It's between the scene where the two kings are celebrating <laughs> with the drink. Just that that whole scene is just super enjoyable to watch. But I also like I don't like the lead up to the final battle because I think a lot of it is just kind of Maleficent breaking things and he and Prince Philip just running past it, not really having to truthfully deal with it. And then he becomes like a what a, like a weed whacker for like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> glorify we whackers what he becomes but the fight with him at versing maleficent as a dragon i thought was actually good so though i'm stuck between that and the scene with the kings just the celebrating hmm. as my favorite least favorite will have to be um when uh aurora comes back to the cabin saying how she fell in love and they're like oh no you can't you gotta forget about him no they're just like straight up no you can't and it just kind of like breaks her heart i was like man this is buns hmm. this is fun. <laughs> um for me i really enjoyed the entire scene in the woods with aurora and then the prince joining her and then them going their separate waves ways and then obviously the when will I see you again? Oh never. Perfect. <laughs> Least favorite. Mm. I think the way that the fairies got into Maleficent's castle was very convenient. Like all the minions that were guarding the, the entrance were not paying attention. Like very convenient. So those minions are not really that idea. good. <laughs> uh, favorite and least favorite song. There's not very many to choose from, but Mickey, what are I don't you looking? have a favorite or a least favorite. What? I say I don't have a favorite or least favorite. Fair enough, Kevin. Um. <clears throat> Um, it's a least favorite. I don't really have a least favorite. <laughs> um, favorite song is uh, uh, "Once Upon a Dream." Yeah, Mike. I'm in the same boat as Dino. I don't have a favorite or least favorite, but for the sake of picking something, I would just say favorite would be um the dream song for the name mm -hmm. i cannot remember i'm spacing on and least favorite will be the king's um the what i thought was just like a chant more right. of than an actual song and it's just based off the premise of it doesn't feel like a song it literally feels like just a chant yeah but so, i didn't really have one it wasn't yeah. much it's the same with um kevin i don't really have a least favorite but for the sake of picking one uh, the king one, like you said, Mike. The the king singing. And my favorite is Once Upon a Dream. So, here is uh, the tough one. Favorite and least favorite character. Mm -hmm. That is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, I guess my favorite probably would be um, not King Human, but the other king. Your favorite is King, uh, what is his name? S Steven? Stefan? King Stefan. Oh, wait, wait. Stefan is the slimmer dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like King Human a lot. King wow. Human? That's the one I meant. That's King an Human. interesting pick for favorite character of this movie. Uh, he, was, he was entertaining. You spoke so highly of Maleficent, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, like, uh, you know, sometimes I gotta switch it up. All right. Uh, least favorite? My least favorite? Uh, now, this may be a shocker. Merryweather. Mm. I feel like a lot of the conflicts were started because of her. No, 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 no. A lot of the conflicts were started because the other two didn't listen to her. 
Well, to be fair, I feel like it was more Flora. Fauna was very easygoing, just kind of goes with the... Fauna is, like, literally just, like, such an adorable character of, like, this is, like, a motherly aunt <laughs> figure. Like, she didn't care about none of the conflict. She was just like, I just want to take care of this child and care for it so much. Super kind and caring. Flora was like, I'm in charge, and I'm going to say what we do, and I'm going to say that's it, and then that's it, just because I say. And Mary was like, well, well, that's not really fair. And <laughs> it's like, that's too bad. <laughs> that is an interesting story. pick. Hmm. Kevin. Uh, favorite's Maleficent. Least favorite, just for the sake of having one, I guess, is the king and queen. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna group them together there. Yeah. Mike. My favorite is Prince Philip. Hmm. And least favorite is Flora. Wow. I was it's not, not even like trying to say that Flora is a bad character. It's just picking one out of the group. She's the one who kind of got on my nerves a lot with just the like. We do what I say because that's what I say. Kind of attitude. Just kind of got yeah. on my skin. Um, I was not expecting any of the fairies to be featured in the least favorite. <laughs> but here we are with two of them. Um, so me, my least favorite, I, I guess I, uh, there's really no one I don't like. So like same with Kevin, I just got to go with, I guess, the queen by default because she doesn't do anything. At least the king does stuff. Um, and favorite, I am really stuck between Meriwether, Prince Philip, Aurora, and Maleficent. But for the sake of saving time, I'm just going to say Aurora. Because of how much I did not like her before this movie, and then how much I like her after watching this movie. Ooh. Because legitimately she was at the bottom of the list of my favorite Disney princesses. She would have been last place every time I thought about it. She worked her way up. Yeah. And all she did was sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not much she did was sleep. Um, well, so... the dissatisfaction with 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 this movie or, or Aurora as a Disney princess is what actually led Disney studios to not release another disney princess movie for like 30 years so wow really yeah fun fact hmm. well i like this one. the next one that we see <laughs> is the little mermaid in 1989 which is exactly 30 years uh, oh <laughs> Whew. And it's funny because when you think of Disney, a lot of the time people always think of the Disney, Disney princesses. princesses. Well, I will talk about it more in the next episode, but Disney hit some hard times after this movie. No, it's not nice. <laughs> um, so I just realized we completely forgot to do our rankings. So I thought, oh yeah, we did usually do that before. <laughs> yeah, we did it at the end of the review segment. So, I'm right. going to do it now. Dequan, what would you give the storyline out of 10? Six. Six? Six. Okay. Characters? Characters, eight. Animation? Seven. Music? Four. Emotion. Oh, generous. What was that? Uh, I, said, I feel said, like that's generous. Yeah, and I said <laughs> emotion. Emotion. Uh, three. <laughs> message slash theme. What was the message again? That true love. True love always all. wins. Oh. Oh, that was close. That was close. <laughs> uh, that would be. I'm gonna give that like a two. Whoa. Humor. Humor, like, although it didn't get a laugh out of me, it did get several smirks out of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna give that like an eight. 
you're giving something that only made you smirk and eat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. I, I, yes, absolutely. I don't laugh at much of anything Disney puts out. So the fact that it made me smirk is actually really good. Listen, he's just, he's spitballing the number right? that comes to his head. You know, like when you roll the dice and that's the number you get. Yeah. He's like, made me laugh, roll the dice. Okay, that's where it's at. Like, I uh, really, really enjoyed the interaction with the kings. Like that, that is like my highlight. <laughs> okay, so world building. And the world building has a four. Whoa! Wow! Legacy. I'm be honest, I'm five. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention during Legacy, this is like the first movie since the beginning of Disney that didn't feature someone smoking. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, Let's go! We (laughs) replaced it with drinking! Right? (laughs) Actually, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Overall enjoyment. At least it wasn't a child at the time. That's also A4. That is a score of 51. Kevin, let's hear your score for storyline. All right, storyline six. Characters. Characters five. Animation. Ten. Music. Mm, Six. Emotion. Two. Message. Five. Mickey, don't start barking now. Humor. Five. World building. Seven. Legacy. And overall enjoyment. Seven. That is a final score of 61. Mike, let's hear it. Keep the ones up. (laughs) Storyline. Storyline. I'll give it a seven. Characters. Characters. Oh, sorry. Uh... I think I'll do an eight. Animation. Um. Hmm. I think I'll yeah nine. I think nine's fair. I almost was gonna say eight, but I like the like hard outlines for a lot of the characters. Mm-hmm. Makes them look very smooth. Music. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give that a three. Uh, motion. Uh, I'll give it a four. Message. Um, I'll give that like a three. Humor. I think seven. World building. Uh, I'm gonna give this an eight. Legacy. Eight. And overall enjoyment. Seven. That brings your score to 64. I think you guys are probably going to be a little bit shocked with my score, given how low your guys are. 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm going to be shocked. So for storyline, I am giving it a 10. Uh, Characters, I am giving it a 9. Animation, I'm giving it a 9. Music, I'm giving it a 5. Emotion, that is going to be pretty low, so I'm going to give it a 3. Message, I'm going to give a 7. No, we'll give it a 6. Humor, I'm going to give an 8. World building, I'm giving it a 9. Legacy, an 8. And enjoyment, this is going to be my first 10. I think. Wow. Okay, uh, I'm amazed about the last one now. 
So that is a score of 77. That's That didn't beat Cinderella. I'm shocked it didn't beat Cinderella. But it did beat Cinderella in enjoyment. I really enjoyed this movie. But a, a show rating <laughs> of 63.25. Well, in Cinderella, again, you know, the music. Like, it had yeah. music as yeah. compared to this that didn't really have it like that. Yeah, I gave Cinderella a 7 in music. Yeah. And the emotional impact was higher for Cinderella for sure. But I was so surprised on how much I liked it. I was optimistic because obviously when you're seeing a new Disney movie, you're optimistic. It's not a new Disney movie, but it is for me because I never saw it. And I was not disappointed. So, before we started recording, I was live on TikTok and... I got two questions. I'm not going to ask one because the way we're going to talk about it, it was, who's your favorite character from Hercules? So we might as well just save that for when we talk about Hercules. But the other one was, what is the worst Disney movie? Does it have to be animated? No, let's not make it animated because I'm pretty sure we already know. Um, Bambi? Well, well, that's what we've seen so far. You never know what we might see. Honestly, I don't even know, man. That's a hard question. Nope, it's easy. Live action Lion King. No. I haven't seen it, so I can't speak on that. I understand it's not. it doesn't have the same heart and soul of the of the animated uh, one I'm, I'm it's not it's hard on him it. there's nothing it, it's, a, it's an empty shell of a movie no they put <laughs> Seth Rogen in it as a reach I love Seth Rogen but this is it was a horrible movie no I'd rather watch National Geographic documentaries of lions <laughs> just like eating each other like <laughs> Do you know, really know? Know? that's something a lot of people <laughs> compare it to they say it is just very, it's very much like watching someone dub over the National Geographic channel. <laughs> exactly. But the, worse. The version of Hakuna Matata from that movie is the version of Hakuna Matata that I have on my playlist of Disney songs. You know, for me, Not I'm going to choose Matata. something that no one would Can never you feel guess. Love tonight, which is even more scandalous. More scandalous. I think the movie I think is the worst Disney movie is Mighty Ducks. Oh my goodness. I do not yep. think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, that movie was terrible because I, was I wanted just... the goddamn cartoon this... and I got the game, that goddamn live action movie. I didn't want that. This we can... Aside from that he like dislikes the movie. He dislikes that he was uh what was it? You were well, tricked. I I do. I feel him though. I feel him on that. I don't think it's you know the worst, but I feel him where it's like you're being told you're gonna watch Mighty Ducks. You're like, let's go. Let me see my cartoon. Why are there real people playing hockey? This weekend, (laughs) exactly. This weekend, I was talking to my wife about it, and I was like, that is quite possibly one of the greatest Mm -hmm. Disney uh, Channel movies ever. So why would you lie to her like that? It's that movie's so good. <laughs> well, it's just it's the idea of like you know you're led to believe you're gonna watch the animated one and then you get held the live action one. It's like why was I gaslit? I don't appreciate that. You got me excited for nothing. Hmm. Why would um, you lie to her? I think I'm going to say this one's gonna be a uh, odd one. Um, I'm thinking, oh, where'd it go? Shoot, it left my brain. Planes. The Pixar, the Pixar Cars <laughs> spinoff. Yo, that movie was amazing. I'm kidding. I've never <laughs> seen a movie a day in my life. And I wouldn't recommend it. Did they make a trains? No, because they made two planes, though. <clears throat> Kevin and Mike. Mike. What? I already said mine. I stand by it. The, 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 the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I pushed that out of my brain because it was just natural. <laughs> I'm, 
Like, it's only right that you go for Joey's throat next. Me right. and Kevin both hit him hard. Say Princess uh, and the oh, Frog the or something. Oh, the obvious choice would be, the obvious <laughs> choice for me is going to be Frozen. That was garbage. Absolute trash. <laughs> Burn it. But I was actually trying to think of one that would be like, what would actually be, like, you know, a bad movie that I could think of. But the only one that I would just dislike so much, and it's complete biasness, and I admit it, it's Frozen. I just, I'm never going to like that movie. I'm not well. I'm just gonna say I disagree wholeheartedly with all three of your guys' picks. <laughs> Wait, what movie did you choose again? Me? Yeah. Um, planes. Planes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you an, made a an very actual fair pick. bad movie. <laughs> you made a very fair pick. I've never seen the movie. How can a movie be bad if it made a billion dollars at the box office? Who are you talking to? I mean, you, well, me, you. You simple. Never oh you. yeah, I forgot. When Frozen when made a billion like dollars too. Richard with a movie, you grow to hate it. Frozen made a billion dollars. Lion King live action remake made a billion dollars. Mighty you Ducks touched a billion what? hearts. That doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> did you say Mighty Ducks touched the touched driest? A in, yeah. I could go sell the driest, <laughs> wateriest lemonade. But if I'm the only one selling lemonade out there, guess what? I'm making all the money. What? I'm what? saying just because it made a lot of money does not make mean that it's good. It means that it's it's not the worst. I mean, I mean it's it had great money advertising money yet. <laughs> when did Can I sprinkle out, another though? thing onto that question? What's up? Well, what do you guys think the best Disney movie was? Oh, that's that's why I'm doing this because I have no idea. I would think that. Um, think about. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this in the pilot, but I would think it's between Princess and the Frog, Lion King, um, Encanto, and Lilo and Stitch. It's one of those four. You know, I can't agree with Lilo and Sitch, but I can give Princess and the Frog where I can count them. So, Mike's, um, Mike's mission a couple episodes ago was to just make me angry. And now it seems like it's the Quandrix mission this episode. <laughs> you, don't, you don't realize it, but I, I it's like, a, you know, paying for a hit, man. <laughs> Oh man. Hate him. How do you not like Lilo and Stitch? Let's just say it was good at one point. Hmm. And it stopped being good. <laughs> Wait, you hate he hate what? I don't hate Lilo and Stitch. I just don't think it's that great. That's all. Hmm. I'm just I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Kevin. So, Mike, I've been looking to because I couldn't remember when Frozen came out, so I've just been guessing, and I finally found it. You when you made your analogy that if you're the only one making lemonade, then you're gonna make a lot of money. That's a fair statement. 2013 was a bad year for animated movies. <laughs> my other example was I mean I have no clue what phone products you guys are going to use but I'm just going to say it anyways Apple products make a crap ton of money a lot of money and I think they are mediocre uh, second that notion you're mostly paying for a status not a product Yeah. Mm -hmm. just because something makes a lot of money doesn't mean it's good so yeah 2013 had frozen Epic. The Kevin is going to kill us all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just checking out at this point. I, 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 I'm just pressing you. I'm going to spend two hours arguing this. The craziest part I'm sitting here, I'm like, Kevin just caught an unnecessary stray. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong if you like Apple products, just. Oh, they're not that great. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well. 
um, that that question did not go the way that I thought it was going to go. I'll just say that. We got a lot of like people like uh, like putting the bandages around their hands right now, getting ready to go punch a like a sandbag or something. Hmm. I do want to know I did nothing wrong. It was all the um, Joey's and Mike's zone. Oh no, I'm fine. I, I'm in, I'm peaceful. I'm good. I've done nothing. I stand by my statements. Oh my goodness, the Quandra. You might be on to oh, something. Wow. What'd I do? The Mighty Ducks only has a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes. How is it that it's low? low. <laughs> because people were lied to. They were like, yay, animated Mighty Ducks. Why are people being real and not animated? <laughs> It was a it was a tough year for uh, all those kids out there who was excited to watch some super ducks and whatnot, and they got people playing hockey. Hmm. It doesn't help that if I'm literally thinking the title, the way it starts, it is animated, and then it just jumps yeah, into no, being is, live action. <laughs> yup, it is. I remember now. The movie straight up tricks you. It's evil. I don't know who told you guys that the movie was going to be animated. I, the, the, the first okay everyone's first like you know initiation into the mighty ducks is the animated ducks so for me when you see it's on toon disney and you're like the mighty ducks every kid's like freaking out they're like oh my god the mighty ducks on toon disney I gotta watch it. and then that comes on and it's not the mighty ducks so you thought it was the mighty ducks movie came out in 1992 the animated series was in 96 which but shows even disney more which was a lot. Me tell you what they're playing. <laughs> I'm not thinking it's going to be live action. And again, if I remember correctly, the movie starts off with an animated scene and then it goes into live action. You guys are wild. <laughs> I wonder I wonder if I watch it today's age, would I have a different thought of the movie? I don't know. I watch it every year. You do? I actually... You might be that. Oh, you might be the percent that's on Rotten Tomatoes. You're boosting the score. <laughs> he's he's the one percent constantly boosting it up. Well, I'm part of the minority of people that like sports movies. Sport movies are generally perceived as pretty bad, but I generally like them all. So. Oh no no no! Don't get it wrong. Sports movies are pretty cool. Just not that one. <laughs> as a person <laughs> who does not like sports, I generally actually do like sports movies. And I actually do like the Mighty Ducks movie. I just don't like being lied to when I'm led to believe I'm going to watch a, a, like cartoon ducks do cool things and instead I'm hit with real people playing hockey. Right. But other than that, I actually like the movie. Or um, I did like it. I don't know now. I mean, you never know if I go back and watch it. But actually, that was buns. <laughs> So, like I said, that that did not go the way I thought it was going to go. I thought we were all just going <laughs> to say. Even better. I thought we were all just going to say "Home on the Range" or "Bambi" and move on. <laughs> no, I but, mean I've been right now looking through uh, Disney Plus just to see, in case there was something else that would pop in my head. But actually, I would switch it to this because I generally think this is a bad movie, rather than just I just don't like the movie because of my own reasons. <laughs> Like, I was trying to look for something that is generally, like, something I think is a bad movie. Yeah. So, before we end here, um, next week, by the time this comes out, actually, the day this comes out, I will be in Epcot in Hollywood Studios. Kevin will be in Orlando. So, we will not be recording next week. So, the day that this episode comes out is the day we're supposed to record our next episode which is 101 Dalmatians and then that would release the next week but we're not going to record that episode till the next week so there's going to be a week where we don't upload okay it's good people are probably going to need a week after hearing what we've said <laughs> at the end of this podcast they're going to need a week to there. just you know breathe and <laughs> gather their thoughts we're going to come back <laughs> We're going to come back and we're going to have zero followers. <laughs> but if we had to leave for a week like you guys did. <laughs> um, so with that, Quandric, where can the people find you? 
Well, I am no longer have the Twitter anymore because of uh, Twitter is now gone. Right. Is it is uh, DMX now? DMX. So, um, <laughs> I don't really have anything. So yeah. All right. <laughs> X gonna give it to you. <laughs> they, they most you certainly know. did. <laughs> so I actually just pulled it up. It's still called Twitter. No, it's X on my phone. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the website. Still says Twitter.com. Well, Twitter.com you know? directs you to it X. Does. That, that, that is still that. Twitter. The stupid thing about that is that Elon Musk bought into, like, they merged into uh, PayPal, and he when he was a member of the board there, he was like, we should change the name of this to PayPal X so that eventually we can just change it to X. And they were like, no. They're like, no. He's been trying to change. Silly? He's been trying to change the name of a company to X for like 15 years. Fine, I'll go buy another company and do it. <laughs> <laughs> when no one realizes that this man is part of Organization 13, that's a Kingdom Hearts reference. Hmm. Uh, but I will say this. Oh, oh go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was going to say that. I was going to say that you can find us on at the YouTube channel of at the Magic of Animation. Podcast. Yeah. So, Mike, where can the people find us on X? <laughs> uh, T M O A underscore pod on the X. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you can email us at the magic of animation at gmail.com for any questions, or you can just follow us on TikTok at the magic of animation or on Instagram at the magic of animation podcast pod pod not podcast pod and then you can follow me on tiktok so that you can join a pre-show live stream in the future at people call me joey with underscores in between each word and with that we will see you in two weeks remember not two weeks we already skipped this because i didn't upload this when it was supposed to be uploaded so we'll see you in one week and they all lived happily ever animated they did. That was, that was simple that time.